This resort flips what we would typically think of as a tropical resort on its head, and I like it. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased and honest opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Phuket. If you'd like to know the exact nightly rate that I paid, or my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. Also note that these graphics will now include my scoring spread, so that you can see how today's hotel score fits into the other scores already on the channel. Straight away, we can see that we're not at a typical Thai beach resort, and the entrance is designed to do just that. Minimalist and modern, with touches of Chinese and Portuguese heritage, and just enough whimsy to keep it light and welcoming. I think blacks and grays are underused tones in tropical resort design, but I've always believed that they complement deep and lush surrounds much better than lighter tones ever could. Welcome to this new Thailand series. There are eight resort videos coming in the following weeks, but I also have over 15 or so other Thai hotel and resort videos already on the channel, so be sure to check them out after this video. If you've been watching for a while, you know that my videos, from format to the graphics to the sound, are continuously, let's say, evolving. So if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. After all, this content is for you and I do reply to every comment. When arriving, guests are treated to a pretty unique process which I've still yet to see at any other brand besides Sala. You will, of course, have your welcome drink, in this case a honey ginger tea, and a cold towel. But then the receptionist will offer you a tray of choices. From here, you're going to choose the type of pillows that you prefer, as well as the soap and amenity scents that you'd like to have in your room. Whichever you choose, it'll be swapped out soon after check-in. With the small lounge area on the left, and an activity center on the right, the reception pavilion leads to the central artery of the hotel, which will take you to all of the rooms and villas, and end at the beach itself. And what a beach it is. You likely know already, Phuket is an island in the far southwest of Thailand, and while it is covered with beautiful beaches, I think Mai Kau on the far north of the island is by far the best one stretching for 11 kilometers and clean as a whistle. The layout of the resort would lead you to think that it had quite a narrow bit of seafront, but the property actually opens up towards the beach, giving guests truly an unparalleled amount of space in the lawn area. My room though was just about as far away from the beach as possible, but it was calm and quiet so I'm not complaining. Designed by Amata Lupai Boon, the resort has a total of 79 guest rooms, 63 of which are private villas, which take up the vast majority of the property. The design aesthetic here is minimalist and linear, but it's not cold and stark. At every turn, from every vantage point, you still feel like you're in a lush, tropical slice of paradise, not inside a stark and barren fever dream. Here we have the front lawn. I mean, honestly, look at how much space is here. All beachfront to boot. On a per capita or per room basis, I really can't express how huge this area feels. So rather than explain it, I'm going to actually show you compared to the two other resorts I've reviewed on my cow. This is looking at the usable lawn space that each resort has. I measured each as best as I could on Google Maps, so bear with me. First, the Malia my cow, admittedly it has a small lawn, just 72 square feet per room. The JW Marriott though is a pretty respectable size, offering 10 times more lawn space than that per room. The Sala though, it comes in at more than double of that. And Sala really used the space wisely and takes really good care of the lawn, something in retrospect that I can't say equally for the JW. The pools are set back with the lawn in front, so who is actually using all this space? There are no adults only policies, but this is clearly not a young kids focused property. 
Families with older kids, couples, expats all fit in equally well, and it just has this impossibly cool vibe that is like a beautiful beach club, but on a lawn, without a speck of pretension. The first pool area on the north side of the lawn has the most variety of seating, and seating is something that Sala does really well. The cushions here are all next level luxurious, and you won't find a faded or frayed towel anywhere in sight. Just across the path is the other larger of the two pools, which is surrounded by the resort's bar and restaurant. The last time I said this was for the Six Senses in Uluwatu, but the designers here really did a nice job of providing like one-stop shopping from breakfast to the pool, to the beach, to lunch, to the pool, to sunset, and so on. Let's also keep in mind, the vast majority of rooms have their own pool, so it's not even that crowded here. And then we have the beach itself. The resort has a few kayaks and such on hand for guests to use, and this beach never disappoints. We'll take a closer look at it at sunset. Now though, it's time to head to my room. So you already know how much I paid for my stay here, but do you know how much the hotel paid me to publish this video? That would be a big fat zero. Not only was Sala unaware that I'd be making a video, they have no idea who I am, and that's the way I like it. Why? Because content creators are recognized every day, on the street, on a flight, in a hotel, and instantly, the VVIP alarms start ringing in everyone's earpieces, and suddenly, their experience is no longer typical. When I'm making a review video, I don't want special treatment, so I film anonymously. That is more challenging than you'd think, though, so that's why every like, comment, and subscription really does mean a lot, and help the channel grow to keep this twice-weekly content flowing. Thanks very much for watching today. My room is up there to the left. Welcome to my room. It's a bit of a strange one. For me, the room is relatively speaking the low point of the resort, and while I don't always believe this to be true, in this case, if you're going to come here, you should really be booking a more expensive pool villa. My room had everything that you'd need, it really is thoughtfully equipped, but they just tried a bit too hard to make it cool, and in doing so, designed the room way out of proportion. Behind these sliding panels is a mixed-use area, which has a mini bar in the center, flanked on either side by closet space. It's plenty of space in theory, but with a combination of always needing to slide a panel and the lack of wiggle room to begin with in the room, it's just an awkward design. When I score rooms, it's out of 20 points total. I generally, in my head, have it broken down into four even categories. Aesthetics, Features, Condition, and Layout. In today's case, it lost 4 points for layout, and 1 for the features, since the layout prevented you from actually really enjoying all of the features. Generally, I am not against small rooms, I actually quite like them when they're done well. But this balcony is too big! I want a space to sit and lounge and drink some coffee. I do not need a space to do the electric slide. If half of this depth was in the room, the entire accommodation would have a much better feel.
And then we have the bathroom. I see what they were going for. I can live with it. But I would have just preferred a larger space for the shower. And the pooling drapes beside the toilet just kind of grosses me out a little bit. And there are, of course, curtains, sheer and blackout for complete privacy. I knew it was going to be a struggle to make it to dinner, and so I ordered a chicken sandwich for room service, and I gotta hand it to them. It was piping hot when it arrived, super crispy and really delicious. Just about as good as a room service sandwich could possibly be. Next up, we can take a look at the spa and fitness center area. Sala currently has eight resorts and they've been operating since 2004. They're also the very proud majority stakeholder in Six Senses Samoy. I say very proud because they mention it near ad nauseum in their literature. For the number of rooms, I think it's well equipped enough. Just do yourself a favor though and ring the spa ahead of time to make sure that the AC is on inside. So now it's time to take a closer look at the beach and also check out today's beautiful sunset. As far as beaches go, this is just about as good as it gets for me in Phuket. Yes, it would be nice to have loungers here, but the fact that they're not allowed is kind of precisely why the beach is so pristine, so it's a give and take. The vast majority of the restaurant and bar is outdoors, and also note that the roof of the full structure I've seen in photos is an extension of the restaurant and bar, but it was closed during my visit. The layout and collection of seating types really did make you feel like you were in your own little private corner, no matter which table you were sitting at. The menu was equally accommodating with a bit of everything but elevated. Note that this menu differs a little bit from when I was there, but it's just about as comprehensive. For starters, we had a rock lobster salad, which was good but pretty basic, along with an incredible Thai-style meatball with crab dip. The main dishes though are where they really shined, ticking the curry, stir fry, and western boxes all quite well. While at dinner, the room had been turned down and they left a beel fruit drink. I really like when hotels do touches like this, offering you something that you would never ever get at home. As many adults focused resorts are, this one is quite sleepy in the morning and I felt as if I had the entire place to myself for a while. The interior air-conditioned portion of the restaurant is where the majority of the breakfast buffet was located. It was in my small but well-curated category, and considering it had a very nice supplemental a la carte menu, it was more than enough. As I'm getting to the end of the video, I'm realizing that I've barely said a word about the service. Overall, it was very friendly, if not a bit unpolished, especially in the restaurant and bar area. Since all of the spaces kind of overflow into one another, 
When you enter the bar, for example, no one really acknowledges you since they're not sure if you're there for the bar or the restaurant or just to sit down. So a bit more proactivity from the restaurant and bar staff would help. But otherwise, it was typical low-touch service that you'd expect from a resort like this, which I think is how it should be. Outside, there was also an omelette station as well as the hot foods on offer, and they were all hot, which was a very nice bonus. And then finally, we have the a la carte menu. Each guest is welcome to choose two of the items that you see. Of course, I went with the pulled pork eggs benedict and the mango maple pancakes. Both were delicious, but both were a touch too sweet. And so that is that. This being the second solid resort on the channel, I feel like I'm getting a true sense of what the brand stands for. Design-driven small resorts with an emphasis on outdoor spaces and really good food programs. The Salamai Cow will certainly make it onto my personal shortlist for holidays. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you can stay up to date with my current Thailand series. Hopefully you'll join me next time from the sublime Como Point Yamu on the east coast of Phuket. Oh, and thanks for watching till the end.